In the depths of the Cold War, survival wasn't a fringe obsession. It was something people calculated every single day. Families dug fallout shelters behind their homes. Governments handed out nuclear preparedness pamphlets. Entire industries grew from the fear of radiation and fallout. But behind all the steel doors, concrete walls, and overly engineered bunkers, a few survival experts discovered something radically different. Something so simple and so effective that it quietly outperformed most of those expensive underground rooms. And that secret wasn't a machine or a special material. It was the Earth itself. During the 1950s and 60s, American and Soviet civil defense teams ran hundreds of tests on blast waves, radiation shielding, and underground temperature changes. What they discovered shocked them. The natural ground beneath their feet was a more efficient protective system than almost anything they could cheaply build. Compacted soil absorbed and scattered gamma radiation far better than concrete. It moderated temperatures with remarkable consistency. And unlike sealed bunkers, the Earth naturally helped regulate humidity and airflow. This revelation set the stage for one of the most effective survival shelters ever created. One of the most important designs to come from this era was developed by Cresson H. Kearney, an engineer who studied real-world nuclear survival scenarios. His structure didn't look like a bunker at all. There was no steel door, no reinforced concrete, and no elaborate ventilation system. Instead, it was a simple earth-covered trench, a long pit carved into the ground, topped with logs or planks, sealed with a layer of plastic sheeting, and buried under two to three feet of soil. Despite its simplicity, the results were extraordinary. Tests showed radiation levels inside were less than one-tenth of those measured outside. Even in high fallout situations, the shelter remained cool, breathable, and surprisingly livable. Where most modern bunkers fail is not in protection, but in livability. People focus on wall thickness, airtight seals, and heavy construction, but a sealed bunker becomes dangerous incredibly fast. Heat builds up humidity climbs. Carbon dioxide rises past safe levels. In Cold War experiments, sealed rooms became uninhabitable within hours. It didn't matter how strong the structure was. Without air circulation, it was a trap. This is exactly why Cold War engineers turned to a brilliant idea that required no electricity at all. Passive ventilation through earth tubes. The concept was beautifully simple. They buried long tubes, sometimes PVC, sometimes metal, six to eight feet underground. Cool, fresh air from the surface flowed through the tubes as it traveled underground. The soil naturally cooled the air in the summer and warmed it in the winter. That air then entered the shelter, while warm, stale air escaped through a small raised vent at the opposite end. It was silent, reliable, and required no moving parts. This method, now known as ground-coupled ventilation, was later adopted by Soviet engineers for underground observation posts and by American homesteaders for root cellars and storm shelters. Even today, these systems can change incoming air temperature by 20 to 30 degrees without a single watt of electricity. Recreating one of these shelters today is surprisingly simple. You would start by digging a trench about three to four feet deep, wide enough for sleeping space and basic storage. Then you would lay logs, planks, or corrugated metal across the top, cover it with waterproof sheeting, and add a thick layer of soil, at least two to three feet. Next, you would bury a 25 to 30 foot intake pipe at least six feet deep and lead it into the shelter. Finally, 
you'd build a small elevated exhaust vent at the opposite end. This basic setup requires no advanced materials, no powered fans, and no expensive construction. Yet the result is a stable, comfortable underground space capable of sustaining life for long periods. It can reduce radiation exposure by up to 90%, keep temperatures stable, and provide breathable air indefinitely. Today's shelter designs often forget the wisdom of the Cold War era. Modern underground rooms are built like submarines, airtight, heavily reinforced, and dependent on electrical systems. But Cold War engineers couldn't assume they'd have power. Their shelters needed to work during crises where resources were scarce and equipment failed. By relying on natural forces instead of machinery, they created systems far more reliable than most modern designs. Soil absorbs radiation. Soil moderates temperature. Soil stabilizes humidity. Nature takes care of half the work before you even start building. What makes this even more fascinating is that these old ideas aren't just for survivalists or history buffs. Earth-integrated designs are now used in off-grid homes, eco-friendly architecture, root cellars, storm shelters, and passive cooling systems. They provide natural climate control without electricity. Rooms stay cool in the summer, warm in the winter, and dry all year simply because the Earth itself acts as the insulation and the temperature regulator. In a world obsessed with high-tech solutions, this low-tech approach remains one of the most effective we've ever found. Every era leaves behind forgotten knowledge, but this one might be the most valuable. The Earth-sheltered ventilation method remains one of the most efficient, sustainable, and protective shelter designs humans have ever developed. It requires almost nothing to build. It works indefinitely. And unlike high-tech bunker systems, it doesn't rely on anything that can break or fail. Cold War scientists didn't guess at this. They tested it, measured it, and proved it in real-world conditions. Their conclusion was simple. Let the ground do the work. So before anyone imagines survival as a thick steel door or a fully sealed modern bunker, it's worth looking down, literally. The most reliable shield humans have ever used isn't man-made, it's the Earth itself. The Cold War generation already proved that. And today, as people rethink off-grid living, sustainable architecture, and emergency preparedness, this forgotten technique is more relevant than ever. If you enjoyed this dive into Cold War ingenuity and natural survival design, remember to subscribe to In the Beginning, share this with fellow history enthusiasts and survival-minded thinkers, and keep exploring the forgotten lessons that still have the power to keep us alive today.